Hey guys, yeah, this is a uh, Grove man lift. It's uh, AMZ 50 XT. And uh, there's the controls down below, but I was having a problem with my uh, the, the uh, platform. It was only turning to the left. So I, I couldn't get it to turn to the right at all. And of course I was, uh, fearing all sorts of things and didn't know much about it and and uh, basically what we got here is this is right where the battery is there's a I think it's called a diverter valve and uh, that's the animal right there this let's see this side of it right here this uh, makes it turn to the right and when this coil is activated it turns to the left and you can see there's two hydraulic hoses that go into this thing this one is you know when when again when this is activated it turns to the right fluid is flowing through this way and then the left fluid is flowing through this guy I didn't know what this guy was underneath here but I think what that is is it's a, a high pressure bypass so you see there's two lines that feed this thing down here this one when I go to activate the function I can feel that there's pressure in this line and there's nothing seems to be happening with this line and that's because I think the only way you'd feel something in this line is if the pressure got too high you know, fluid, hydraulic fluid would come in here and just flow right out that line right back to the tank. So I had taken this apart, but really there's not, there's not much to adjust in there other than I think if you loosen it up, it lowers the, the uh, pressure at which this valve will bypass. Um, so anyway, at first I thought it was, um, the fact that, see this red thing right here? If you, you can press this plunger in to, to kind of bypass the electronics, it, it pushes a pin that uh, there's a, I don't know what you call it, a, a valve body inside here that pushes that way and this way. And it's just free floating in there. And uh, anyway, the pin on this side, it's hard to see but the pin on that side was frozen solid so I couldn't I couldn't move it in or out and I thought well maybe that had something to do with my issue so there again I, I took took this apart and be careful when you do that you know th this the electrical connections come off that well I'll, I'll do it right now these guys come off this little cap it's just a plastic cap that thing pulls off this coil just slips right off of there um, and then this guy, I think I had a, a, a 14 millimeter wrench. Oh, I'll pull it off. Pull this guy off. the hydraulic fluid comes out pretty good when this guy comes off. You can see that hydraulic fluid coming out. Um, anyway, inside here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a There's a pin, I'll pull that pin right out of here. Okay, there it comes out. You can see that, that little pin. Be careful, because that thing, I, I lost, well, I didn't lose it. I ended up finding it out in the driveway, but it came out without me knowing it. And uh, anyway, you need that pin in there, obviously. And then this was the, Remember I was telling you there's a like a valve 
thing in here this thing just you just pull that right out see that that guy right there that's all it is and that just slides right in there and it just pushes back and forth and depending on you know depending on where the where it's blocking fluid fluid either goes into this line you know or the pressure goes to this line and that's what rotates your basket okay well anyway I had done all this you know taking all this stuff apart and put it back together I found that on one of the YouTube videos it said that you know if you have a short between these two prongs that the coil is no good which I understand that but for whatever reason I was measuring zero uh, zero resistance on this other coil here but the thing still works so I'm not really sure how it's working but uh, obviously it must have enough of a magnetic field to you know to pull to, to move the pin in these uh, in these valves back and forth anyway so then I was thinking well you know maybe there's some kind of a blockage up you know up in the front here and uh, so what I did was I took out I took off these uh, thinking that well you know there's only this has got to be the thing you know that that turns this basket right whatever's in here so there's really only two lines that come into this I know there's a contraption here not really sure what all that is but I pulled this line off and this line off and uh, you know found that there wasn't when I activated the the functions there really wasn't all that much flow up here very very little flow so then I started thinking well maybe there's some kind of a blockage in these lines you know so anyway this one is the one that turns it to the right when there's pressure put to this line it turns to the right when there's pressure put to this line it turns to the left I tried I was gonna swap the lines but of course there's not enough slack for me to get this line into this port and vice versa so I couldn't do that anyway um, so what I ended up doing was uh, I pulled off, I better put that, I better put this thing back in there, I'm losing all kinds of hydro hydraulic fluid. Of course, be careful of that pin. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put the camera down. So anyway, I was thinking last night that, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll, because the, you know, it turns to the, to the uh, left okay I was gonna take this line you know these two lines and swap them and uh, just see what happens well what I did is I pulled off each one of these lines and then I activated the function I could see there's very good flow coming out of this valve body you know to turn it to the right and very good flow to turn it to the left well then I started looking at the lines back here let me grab my light and uh, you can see there's two uh, there's two um, I don't even know what they are they must be like some kind of flow restrictors Hang on, maybe I can see better from this this way Yeah, you see right where my pliers are? There's like a little threaded cap there. And anyway, the one that the pliers are on, that's for the, you know, for the uh, turning it to the, the platform to the right. So all I did was I, I figured, well, if you turn it clockwise, I was thinking that that would restrict the flow. And if you turn it counterclockwise, I was assuming that that would increase the flow. And it, it turned out to be right. What I did is I, I just turned that knob with my players there about, I don't know, I'd say about a half a turn. And I'll be darn, I fired up the machine and, and sure enough, uh, that's all it was. So anyway, I just thought this tip might be helpful if anybody has a 
Grove Manlith and their platform isn't isn't turning properly, you know, or even if it turns real good one way but not very good the other way, uh, you might want to adjust those adjust those uh, you know those those flow restrictors back there on those two lines. So anyway, that's all.